Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to season two, episode twenty-seven. On today's episode, we're going to be giving you our UCL reaction. Uh, to, I believe it's weekday two uh, of, our, of the round of sixteen. Real Madrid versus Liverpool. What a game! Uh, City versus um, RB Leipzig. We have Napoli versus Eintracht Frankfurt. Inter versus Porto. We're going to be giving you our match reactions to each of these matches. Let me introduce my co-host Alvaro. What's up, guys? So, uh, as always, guys, remember I post a link on Twitter at Kool Aid Podcast Ten. If you ever feel like joining and adding into adding to the discussion, feel free. Go on, go on Twitter at Kool Aid Podcast Ten. Click on the link, and then you'll you'll be uh, join the hangout. Uh, but the first game, uh, we we have to start here. Liverpool versus Real Madrid at Anfield. Liverpool go two 0 up. Liverpool are cruising. Real Madrid, people are like, oh my God, oh my God, is this going to be a baptism? Is Liverpool going to uh, going to finally get revenge on Real Madrid after all those UCL final losses? No. We see Real Madrid's heritage in this competition show up and they completely annihilate Liverpool at the crib. Five, They score five without reply. The game ended 5-2 in favor of Real Madrid. I don't know. What are your thoughts on, on, on this game? Two things. First of all, is what you said at Anfield. At Anfield, that's embarrassing. At Anf- at the crib, if you lose, let's say you lose three two. All right, hard fought match. Five unanswered goals. Five. Yep. Yep. The other thing. Yep. The five unanswered goals. That was my second note. Five unanswered goals. That's that that's that's tough, and that game showed you how shitty. Liverpool's defense is at the moment. Van Dijk, Van Dijk, he, we, we know the type, of, the type of player that he is. He's world class. Aside from that, there's not much to be happy about for that defense. We, we saw the, the mistake that with Allison, that was, it wasn't the same as Courtois, but both goalies for Gajos would be goalies for, 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 the, for their respective plays. And Madrid was just finding holes in the defense. And that, that was just, I mean, you would expect that that there will be some sort of of, of changing mentality at halftime or something, but it was just back to back to back to back. I mean, yeah, what's I mean, it called? And they're done. They're, it, they're, it, not, they're, they're not gonna be up three goals in Madrid. They're not. No, 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 no. This tie is completely done for. Completely done for. And and I hate to say that because I I despise Real Madrid. Um, we don't like Real Madrid at all. But when you look at the first twenty minutes. Liverpool were dominating. They were yeah. creating chances. Real Madrid, they didn't look at it. Fantastic goal from Darwin Nunez. That little back heel, that little flick. That was nice. That was, that, nice. That was a that was class nice. finish. Uh, a player who has been criticized this season. Uh, and then you see the Courtois mistake. Uh, he miscontrols it. Salah is able to basically capitalize on I mean, this He's never been known for his on-ball skills either way. I- <laughs> but, but yeah, but no, that, that was just... That was yeah. And then you see a fantastic uh, shot from from Vinny uh, beat Allison, and then in the same instance, he, um, in a game where Courtois has already made a, a absolute uh, huge mistake, Allison makes an even bigger mistake and just basically passes the ball into into um, Vinny Junior. It ricochets off him, and it's basically two two. Both goalkeepers, yeah. world class. Each of them has that made up. So that, that, that's the, the same goal by Vinny. Obviously, that doesn't take any skill. Yeah. But, but the way Vinny is performing, the, the, this this is not even a fair, a fair argument anymore. At some point, we we thought that that Ansu Ansu Fati was gonna be above Vinny's level. Vinny continues to show that he 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 he's world class. He has been disgusting, and I mean. We saw Ben Sema also did a, uh, also had a big part in this game, but Vinny is just I mean that first goal showed you all all there is to to say about about his game. He he's all over. And no, yeah, I know Vinicius Junior. Um, and th- and this season hasn't been his best because for example, when you look at his season in La Liga, it hasn't been that brilliant. Uh, he has been criticized a lot. Uh, there are some on on the field issues, off the field issues regarding with some other. Uh, fan bases, but in this competition, Real Madrid basically turns up alive, and that's what they basically did. Uh, and then in the second half, 
I think will will basically kill Liverpool. Was that what first the, the goal that killed Liverpool was that second goal? Um, because you're in the driving seat, Allison makes that huge mistake, and you basically leveled up, like saying, "Oh my God, we had such a great start to the game," and then Real Madrid are able to come back. Um, but then in the second half, uh, a free kick, no one is marking Militao. He goes in for the header, three two, and then you have about ten minutes later. Karim Benzema shoots the ball, ricochets off a goal with Joe Gomez, a deflected goal, 4-2. And then Modric with, with, with a great run uh, off a counter, uh, basically passes the ball to Benzema, and Benzema is able to sit down. Uh, I think I believe it was Joe Gomez again, or I'm basically missing yeah. five. Two. But Real Madrid were, were dominating in, in that completely second half. Liverpool were completely... Um, the, the, the thing is that everybody talks about how... How difficult it is to to win at Anfield? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that 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 game was embarrassing for Liverpool. Yes. and then this yeah. and this is a season where Liverpool have been atrocious no, in the league. Exactly, they're not gonna recover from that next in in the, in the second leg. That 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 team is not recovering in the in in, in the in the Premier League either way. That mm-hmm. to lose by three goals in the Champions League, the first leg at Anfield. That that's, that's no, 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 I did it's completely done for. Um, and, and we'll see, we'll see what that means for Jordan Klopp's future. Okay, uh, okay, I, I, that that is a very good question because Jordan Klopp has been on criticism, and especially with some rumors about the ownership, um, is new bids coming, rumors about the about the new owners. Is your Jordan Klopp the man to continue in this job? Um, because okay. We saw in Dortmund after seven years, it the Dortmund were were very close to fighting off for, for relegation. Uh, they weren't just the same. Can Jurgen Klopp basically revamp this squad? Because Liverpool are are I believe they're ninth in, in the Premier League right now. This is not where Liverpool should be, and this is not what they want to be. Um, but although before we move on to the next game, is this tie done for? Is Real Madrid definitely going to go through? I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you this much. If Madrid blows a three goal lead at home in the second oh leg, uh, fingers crossed. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do we'll do it there. If that happens, I will do something. I, I will do it there that you guys propose in the, in, in the next video because I, I, <laughs> I don't know how Madrid blows that. Guys, guys, yeah, comment down below. Um, but okay, listen, I do have a feeling that if Liverpool do come back, Madrid, if, if for example, if they score three goals uh, and it's 3 0, Madrid will find one. Real Madrid will find just one goal, one goal just to basically go through by just scraping it. Uh, but I, I the, the tie is, is over for me. Uh, Real Madrid will definitely go through. I, I don't see how this Liverpool team uh, can basically beat Real Madrid in the Bernabeu. Uh, but guys, Napoli, what a season Napoli is having! They basically go away from home, they go to Germany, and they beat Eintracht Frankfurt two 0 What a performance from! Uh, uh, how do you say his name? Uh, Kavishkelia? Don't, don't ask me. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, guys, the uh, Napoli's exciting winner and Oziman. Uh, Oziman and um, Giovanni, uh, the Lorenzo both got on, on the score sheet. Uh, <laughs> uh, and basically, they basically win 2 0 away from home. Napoli look, are looking very dangerous right now. When you look at the entire tournament as a whole, far. You don't see any team that is at the level of Napoli or ever playing up to that level. You can say, and, and, if, yeah, go, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, you can say that, for example, um, Real Madrid, but Real Madrid aren't playing that well. Um, and I, when you look at all the teams left in the competition, the only team that is playing very, very well is Napoli. Could, could this be Napoli's year to win the Champions League? Imagine that. I mean, and it's just what you said, like, for example, Madrid, they, they humiliated Liverpool. But they're not doing as great in the, in La Liga. Napoli is one of those teams that that ha, they, they have translated that that success in in their respective league in Serie A mm-hmm. onto the Champions League. That shows you how complete the team has been. We can say we can see Barca has done great in La Liga. They have done great in Europe. Yeah. So we, we, Napoli is one of those few teams that have been able to to dominate in both. I mean, they're, they're looking as strong as ever for a team for an eleven. That does not rank with, with, with all these top clubs in Europe. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Um, basically managed under uh, Spalletti, 
Napoli have been basically re revitalized, and then, and then when you look at, for example, exactly when you, when we, when you think about how they how Kulubali left, how um, basically uh, Mertens left, how Insigne left, all all, all these veteran players, um, it just the team as a whole. You you wouldn't think that Napoli would be in this situation, uh, top of Serie A with a huge point difference, and having some very good results, but. Who knows? Uh, I definitely think that um, in Italy, I don't think Andrea and Fakir are going to go through, especially with that um, uh, deficit in, in the scoreline, and especially with uh, Kulumuani missing the, the return fixture as, as he got a red card. Uh, I don't see how Andrea and Frankfurt are basically going to go through. That, that, that team has been too consistent and strong to, to, to have such a major hiccup in, in the second leg. I, yeah. I really, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I I definitely see Real Madrid and both Napoli going through. Uh, but now the block brusher tie for the second match day of both games. Basically, uh, you have RB Leipzig versus Manchester City. Now that ends in a one-one draw. This was this wasn't at the Etihad. This was in Germany. Um, RB Leipzig played at home. Now Manchester United. I mean Manchester United. Manchester City are having a problem. Um, they haven't been green in the league. That's one. Um, Holland. What, what, what are your thoughts on Holland? Because, for example, you could say that, for example, Manchester City have been playing better football on before Holland. How Holland is a det det detriment to the team. I don't really subscribe to that philosophy. I don't think Manchester City play to his strengths. Um, the and thing is, the thing is, that team, everybody said all these years, that team was in dying need of a striker. Yeah. They, they found the best available striker. They they just, they, they just have to adapt to his to, to that type of game. And from what I remember, Guardiola has never been the guy that he plays for, to, he, he, that, he, that he tells his players play to, for that guy, run run the game through that one guy. I mean, that, that midfield is too gifted. In in Man City, the midfield is too gifted to just be to just be. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's how Guardiola sees it. Too gifted to just be playing it through Holland. I think that again they should play it to his to his strengths and um, just use him as much as possible. I mean, I feel like if they change his, his play style a little more towards his advantage, who who knows how many more goals he will have? But we saw that today was not a great match for them. Um, we saw a surprising thing that Guardiola made no substitutions. Which, yeah, which he, been, yeah, if, he, if, he, that's that's surprising. Like, for example, if, you, no, yeah, the, if you see such a, such a, bland, such a bland game that is going on, you gotta find a spark, and that team is, is deep enough to, to have good guys on the bench to, to, to get going. In. Yeah, I know. I, 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 for example, you have a World Cup winner in Julian Alvarez, um, just sat on the bench, and mm -hmm. for example, uh, Phil Foden, he hasn't been the best so far this season. And Jack Grealish. Uh, Jack Grealish has been one of Manchester City's better players. But, for example, what does that say on Manchester City if Jack Grealish is, is your, your second best player? Um, it, just, it hasn't been clicking for Manchester, Manchester City so far this season. And could this be another year where they fail to win the Champions League? Um, and what, what could this mean for Pep? Is, is Pep going to stay at the club? Is he going to leave? Well, that, That's all going to depend on the, on the Premier League race. Yeah, exactly. If and Pep misses out on both, we'll yeah. see what that means for him. And 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 not only that, for example, what does this uh the the financial trial, yeah, um, the basically the 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 trial that's basically ongoing. Uh, I don't think that Manchester United, Manchester City are going to feel the repercussions now. I, if they do, if there are punishments, I think it's going to be later on, um, maybe the next year, maybe two two years, something like that, because like there's a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah. A process is it to go through and just these things take time, but who knows? Uh, cause is, could this mean the end of Pep Guardiola at Manchester City? Uh, okay. but guys, the last match that we're basically going to be discussing is Inter versus Porto. Now, Lukaku basically got a late, basically a late winner in the 86th minute. Uh, he was able to, to basically get a much needed goal, um, to put Inter, Inter ahead. And now they're going to go away to Portugal in um, for for the reverse fixture um, with with a goal ahead. Now Inter have been playing 
much better football uh, than I, I think on, on the Conte. Um, I, I don't know your thoughts, but no, I mean, look, look, the Inter's field that, that that's a fortress. So that's not one of those. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough stadium to go to, definitely. Exactly. I, I mean, we saw how, how much how much those. they we saw how much they they were hyping it up when when Barca went over. Yeah. Um, for for Porto to go in and keep it nil nil until the late eighties, and just come out there one zero, I don't consider that a win. No one, no one, no Porto fans should consider that a win. But they are in a very comfortable spot to, at the very worst, take a one take a one goal lead in, at home and take it into into overtime. That the today's result was not good for Porto uh, on on the stat sheet, but they, I mean. They gotta be motivated that that it, it, it could have ended much worse uh, away in against Inter. And I mean, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. And and then when when you think about it, you go into at home. It's only like a one nil deficit. You can make a comeback, um, and it just makes such shame that, for example, at Barcelona uh, have been knocked out by this Inter side because instead of Inter playing Porto, that should be FC Barcelona, and that gives me just. Yep. It's so frustrating, but yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, but Lukaku gets a much needed goal. Basically, um, Inter can now go into that reverse fixture with a lead, something to protect. Uh, it's not going to be easy. For example, um, we we know from from the past, um, Porto Stadium, uh, and 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 they're basically they're, they're home advantage. Is it's not an easy place to go to. Um, but it's all open for the second leg. Uh, and basically, both of these matches, Manchester City versus RPC Leipzig and uh, Inter versus Porto, that, those two games are completely open, in my opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. Any of those four teams can go through. Manchester City, I think they're slight favorites in, in, their, in their game at home. Inter Porto, I think that's favors Inter a little bit more, but still open. Um, but guys, that was it for tonight's episode. Um, as always... Um, I post a link on Twitter. If any of you guys want to join, uh, just go on Twitter at Cooley Podcast Ten. Just click on the link, and then you'll be able to to basically join. Give your thoughts, your discussions, comment. Um, do you disagree or agree with anything that we said? Um, and as always, guys, like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you guys all on the next episode. Peace out, guys. Peace, you guys.